I'm Kate Chaplinsky for the HAN Network, and we're at Silver Hill Hospital in New Canaan today because September is National Pain Awareness Month, and today we're talking about interventions for those who suffer from chronic pain. And I'm joined by Dr. Chris Cutter, who is the program director at the Chronic Pain Recovery Center here at Silver Hill. Dr. Cutter, happy to talk with you today. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Now, let's talk a little bit about why is psychotherapy used in treating chronic pain? Um, yeah, so as a clinical psychologist, one of my passions is uh, psychotherapy and um, the research I'm doing between here and Yale, I, I like studying what works and why. Um, psychotherapies um, um, tend to work across the board for a lot of different disorders, um, and particularly in chronic pain, um, we find it's going to be really helpful to adjust the lifestyle changes that the patients need to make in order to actually have a full rounded treatment. So uh, in the past and until recently, pain, chronic pain has been uh, treated by medications and pretty much medications alone. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's an old model, meaning like when you have pain, sometimes you need a medication for breakthrough pain. That there's complete fairness in that statement. But medications alone can't help manage pain. Um, it can actually, it can be quite tempting to quanti keep, keep taking medication to keep mm -hmm. treating your pain um, because that's kind of what we've been doing since we were kids. Um, but I do like the new direction of how doing preventive medicine works with this. So when we think about uh, pain, uh, we think about the old way of treating pain or ac acute pain for that, meaning, for that matter. Uh, that is rest, maybe take some medication and uh, bandage it up. Um, when we're treating ch chronic pain, it's going to be a new a whole lifestyle change to how to quick, uh, effectively manage the pain since we now know the pain signals will not go away. It's kind of this faulty alarm uh, ringing uh, in, your, in your body thing. Oh, I have an injury, but when actually you don't have one. Um, so the trick with medications is um, we get used to them. So you take a medication and eventually it starts, stops to not work as well. So you need more and it's not, that dose stops to work as well. Then you need more and more and more and you build up some massive tolerance. And unfortunately, um, a lot of our patients become addicted to these pain medications or just com physically completely dependent on them and they actually go in through a um, opioid withdrawal if it's opiate medications or whatever medication they're trying to utilize. It's not being effective as it was. So then we take a look at what in, in the research, what, it, what has been effective, what good clinical trials have been done and we start seeing uh, managing the pain rather than to to get rid of it completely. In psychotherapy, what I usually find is um, empirically supported psychotherapies have been quite helpful, such as um, cognitive behavioral therapy and acceptance commitment therapy. But when we think about psychotherapies, why they're so important, we try to see how we can uh, affect the person's mood. And we know by um, when we say mood, um, a person's emotional states travel up the same pathways as pain signals do. So we want to actually try to get uh, a way to help the person manage their mood through different avenues by teaching different skills. So uh, one of my favorite ways is to make sure we can restructure the way they think about a problem, um, decreasing stress doing that way, um, how they can uh, regulate and manage emotional set dates, and also help to not repeatedly engage in unhealthy behaviors, such as arguments or trying to over push themselves when they don't necessarily need to, to exacerbate that pain. Mm -hmm. But uh, just thoughts, feelings, behaviors type of um, tripartite mood of trying to help uh, folks to achieve better mental health. Right. And can you go into more of some of the examples of, of different psychological interventions? Yes, so I like two in particular for chronic pain. Um, and if we we're thinking about like these um, clinics uh, like Silver Hill or Cleveland Clinic, we have a specific time frame we'd like to work with patients on. And I like uh, about this four to six week model hmm. where um, I have enough time to actually really fully engross a patient in how to ma do pain management techniques. and. Um, about that four to six week method, I like using cognitive behavioral therapy and acceptance commitment therapy. Now, both are type of therapies um, are these labeled empirically supported psychotherapies, and they're really effective for time limited treatments like this. So, uh, what I like about empirically supported therapies is they're measurable, and we can have folks um, and clinicians be trained on this. Um, it takes hundreds, if not thousands of hours to get expertise in these uh, types of therapies. Um, 
but then you, you know a quality product is going to be delivered, kind of like you know what the medication is going to be. Um, when you know a very good therapy is going to be delivered by an expert clinician, you can count on it being effective for that particular um, that disorder. So um, cognitive behavioral therapy, kind of like what I spoke about earlier, is how to effectively restructure thinking behaviors that maybe thought patterns that are not helpful, such as catastrophizing the pain. Um, emotional states, such as how intense you experience the emotion, how can we actually turn the volume on that down a bit so it's not so exacerbated, which will flare up your pain? And uh, think about specific behaviors, such as uh, my favorite to eliminate first is uh, the behavior to want to rush to a medication or rush to someone to take care of me rather than take a very active role um, in trying to help and manage your pain yourself. Um, so a lot of we do see with pain folks, uh, pain um, people experiencing and suffering from chronic pain is um, there's a strong temptation, not, I'm not saying for the majority of folks, but there is a strong temptation and pull f to want to have someone take care of you yeah. or to have a medication um, treat this so you can move on without your day. So um, unfortunately, um, we can't do that at this point as far as the medical technology hasn't caught up with us yet. So we want to have folks uh, be have a very active role, have enough skills to cope with it themselves. And what are some other types of non-pharmacological interventions? Well, there's a couple that are, um, I've run a couple trials on different versions um, within Yale School of Medicine um, and the APT Foundation, where we take a look at um, different sorts of non-pharmacological interventions. And besides the empirically supported psychotherapies, we take a look at something called complementary and alternative medicines, CAMS for short. It's a it's not a new field, but it's definitely getting a, enough attention now. When we, we, what I like about these CAMs is that uh, when we exhausted all possibilities, when things are not working, when Western medicine is just not working, let's take a look and really put some good science behind and good testing behind something else that might work, such as yoga, uh, such as uh, video game research, anything that would actually tailor fit to the patient to address their specific needs. Uh, and sometimes we had to be very creative with them. Um, the last trial we did was a, the uh, last two trials that I mentioned them was um, doing yoga for chronic pain and um, there is nothing mystic about it. It's extremely effective. Uh, it helps with physical, um, physical activity, mobility, um, and a sense of accomplishment. There's a lot of impact on mood. Um, and so there was a solid signal that it needs to be studied more, but also we had great results similarly to um, these exercise video games just to get rid of some sedentary lifestyles. Um, they're not very particularly rigorous exercises, but they actually are enjoyable. And we start noticing folks have a sense of accomplishment by completing these games. And even if it's for five to eight minutes a day, it gets a, a person suffering from chronic pain moving. And that's one of the big goals as far as addressing uh, the co-occurring depression that typically happens with, with chronic pain. And um, also the pain itself, relieving pain sensitivity it's not a cure by any sense of the matter. Um, it's just one tool for the toolbox that, it, that takes to ma help manage chronic pain, which is many different tools. And let's talk a little bit about self-management for someone with chronic pain. What do you suggest? So that's a, a, a good point. So um, in our earlier interview we had, a lot of this has to do with a complete lifestyle overhaul. So we're really working on somebody to change um, Besides how they view pain, uh, we'd like them to change. All right, let's see how um, the people you're associating with your life is this exacerbating uh, like a stressful lifestyle. Um, so socially, um, physically, are you being uh, mobile enough? Um, are you attending all your uh, medical appointments, necessary medical appointments? Um, are you not relying too much on medications to manage the pain? Um, and if you are a spiritual person, and spirituality tends to help, and we take a look at that research as well, um, it does tend to help with uh, um, pain sensitivity and pain flare-ups, but only if that is something that is important to you. Um, it's not necessarily better than other folks. It's just only for those folks that are very, very interested in spirituality. But we do um, notice that similar to diabetes and hypertension, chronic pain emerges like a chronic um, medical condition just like that, whereas a whole lifestyle health change has to happen between the medications and um, changing diet, changing um, the way you look at your physical activity, changing the way you associate with others, and making sure there's enough support in your life. Now let's talk a little bit about 
people with chronic pain may be going on the internet and internet interventions. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Um, so just like uh, with internet, there's there's pros and cons with it. So there's a, a there's some very helpful sites if I'm going to have somebody with um, chronic pain in my own private practice or if I'm seeing in my clinic. Um, what I would like them to do is visit very helpful sites that actually can um, put more tools in the toolbox to help manage pain. And so the UCLA Mindfulness Institute has a terrific site on different types of meditations. And meditation being another complementary alternative medicine um, is a really helpful way of actually distracting from the pain to put your mind in a different place. Um, nothing hokey about it. It's actually extremely well thought out scientific methods of uh, having control over your mind and body. Um, there are um, specific chat forums for folks that are suffering from pain in isolation um, through the American, um, the American Pain Society, where uh, folks that are just not yet to be ready to be mobile, they can actually start doing chat rooms like a support group, if you will, and they can kind of talk online, whether folks are, um, again, not able to... Uh, not really able if their pain is too severe and they haven't learned how to manage it yet if they're not able to leave the house uh, they can actually engage in these chat rooms or if they're in like, these remote areas where um, there's just not enough support groups around uh, it's really helpful like a telemedicine approach to reach out to folks that are suffering from pain that you are not alone with this that a lot of people approximately 100 uh, million are suffering from chronic pain and what do you suggest people avoid when it comes to internet interventions? Okay, so uh, self-diagnosing is a big, um, big problem uh, to see specifically what you might have. Uh, WebMD is a, a terrific website. Uh, however, it sometimes takes a physician, an expert um, in neurology or, or anesthesiology um, and psychiatry uh, to help out with physically knowing what's going on with you. Uh, so I would uh, really avoid self-diagnosing uh, or just be cautious the first thing you read might not be true or somebody says oh all you have to do is do this for to manage chronic pain or if you take this combination of combination of medications then you can manage your chronic pain i did this for me so that um that's kind of playing with a little bit with fire and playing with your health in, in a very unhelpful way okay. Great advice again. Dr. Cutter, thank you so much for talking with us. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, you can find out more about our partnership with Silver Hill Hospital this month at han.network.